God bless you, my beloved. Thank you for joining us today. We are Abundant Grace Church. I'm Bishop Ramon Di Maria, and I'm the pastor of the church. If you would like to contact us by email, you may do so at abundant.grace at att.net. Today we will be going into part two of our message series titled, The Holy Spirit is Life. I will be coming from the book of Romans chapter 8 and verse 16, which reads as follows from the King James Version. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. The Good News Bible renders it. God's Spirit joins himself with our spirits to declare that we are God's children. My beloved, the Holy Spirit of God always produces general effects on those who really have him. There are certain marks of his presence in the souls of those who have his presence dwelling within them. In this message, I will set down certain marks of the Holy Spirit's presence in a person. Last week, we did the first five. Today, I will start with number six. All true Christians have the Holy Spirit, and by Him are made holy. He is the Spirit of holiness. My beloved, as Christians, we are to walk by the Spirit and not by the flesh. Because when we walk by the Holy Spirit, we walk in holiness. But when we walk by the flesh, we walk in sinfulness. Romans chapter 1 and verse 4 says, And declared to be the Son of God with power, according to the Spirit of holiness, by the resurrection from the dead. So my beloved, when the Holy Spirit dwells in men, he makes them follow after the fruit of the Spirit, which are mentioned in the book of Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. So you may want to go to that scripture and see what the fruit of the Holy Spirit is. You, you may want to study it, but let me tell you what it says. That way, you will be knowledgeable when you read the scripture. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against which such there is no law. There is no law in the Word of God that prevents you from showing an abundance of this fruit. The more you show, the more you manifest this fruit, the more God blesses you. Now notice the first is love. And when we go back to John 3.16, for God so loved the world. And also remember, God is love. And those that walk in love, love God. This is food for thought. And we're not talking about the love of this world. We are talking about the agape love of God. And by God's love, for his creation, he sent his only begotten son to die for the sins of mankind to redeem them back to himself. The Holy Spirit makes it natural to true Christians through their new 
divine nature to count all God's precepts concerning all things to be right and to hate every false way. You see, there's two ways. There's the right way, there's the wrong way. There's the way of light, there's the way of darkness. There's the way of truth, and there's the way of a lie. When God leads you, it is truth. When the world leads you, who is ruled by Satan, it's a lie. It's a falsehood. It's deceit. So those that follow the ways of the world follow the ways of Satan. And they cannot do what is right in the eyes of God until they repent and receive Jesus Christ as their Savior and Lord. 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 4 says, Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And example, money, money, money. Another example is to want what someone else has, to covet the neighbor's goods, to covet the neighbor's wife, to covet the things in the world. Now, God never says that you cannot be rich. But it is better to be rich in God's blessings than to gain the whole world's riches and lose your soul. To a true Christian, sin is no more pleasant to commit. It is their sorrow when they are tempted by it. It is their shame when they are overtaken by it. Did you notice how bad you feel? Let's say you are a Christian and you commit some sin. You notice how bad you feel? Well, you should because the Holy Spirit is convicting you of that sin. But that sin is not unto losing your salvation. But sin creates a wall between you and God. It hinders your prayers from being answered. It hinders you from enjoying the things of God. Satan comes to condemn you. The Holy Spirit comes to convict you so that you will turn away from your sin by repentance and get on the right track into serving God through Jesus Christ. The happiest times are when Christians are enabled to walk more closely with God. The saddest times are when they are furthest off from Him, a furthest way off. Have you noticed that when you get in sin or you fall into some type of sin that you don't feel that relationship that you had with God? Just go back to the Garden of Eden. What happened? When Adam and Eve sinned, immediately they saw their shame because they were naked. They saw sinfulness. They saw the flesh. And that is the way it is with sin. When we are a Christian and we fall into some type of sin, we feel ashamed. We feel like we're not worthy. My beloved, the best thing to do is confess that sin and continue to serve God. Don't let the enemy lie to you that you are not worthy to serve God. You are worthy to serve God. Repent and go on. Seven. All those who have the Holy Spirit are spiritually minded. You think about things in the spirit. You think about how to win the lost, how to do good, how to share with other people. You look at things differently. When you look at a person, you don't look at them with lust or desire to have what they have. Romans chapter 8 and verse 5 says, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. 
But they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. You want to be more like Christ. You want to be the image of Christ. You want to show kindness and love to others. My beloved, there's a difference in walking by the Spirit and walking by the flesh. The flesh is me, me, me. The Spirit is giving to others as God gave to us through giving us His only begotten Son. The general character or attitude, the process and attitude of the minds are in favor of spiritual things and serve God continuously, habitually. The mind is set on, what can I do for God today? Where when your mind is in the world, what can I do for myself today? When you're walking by spirit, when you get up, you want to thank God and pray to God. When you're walking by the flesh, you want to get ready to go to make money, to do other things that are unspiritual. At times, they, they may be drawn by strong temptations, of course, but the general tendency of their lives, their ways, their tastes, their thoughts, and habits are spiritual. As Christians, we are all going to be tempted all the time. As a Christian, you will be tempted more than those that are sinners, those that are lost, because Satan has them. He doesn't pay attention to them. He pays attention to you to discredit you, to bring dishonor to God through Jesus Christ, and to condemn you, to make you feel bad so you don't want to go on, to feel like you're unworthy to be a Christian. But remember, Christ died for the sins of the world. He died for your sins, past, present, and future. Amen. This can be seen in the way they spend their leisure time, the company they love to keep, and their conduct in their own homes. All of this is a result of spiritual nature implanted in them by the Holy Spirit. You want to pray over your meal. You just don't run in and gobble your food and run out. You want to have fellowship with one another. You want to talk about the things of God. You want to love one another. You want to hug one another. My beloved, when you are a Christian, your household is a lot different than when you are a sinner in the world. Eight. All that have the Holy Spirit feel a conflict within them between the old nature and the new nature. It is a constant battle between sinning and not sinning. Good and evil. Light and dark. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 17 says, For what our human nature wants is opposed to what the Spirit wants. And what the Spirit wants is opposed to what our human nature wants. These two are enemies. And this means that you cannot do what you want to do. Your mind is a battleground yeah. for Satan. My beloved, at times you're going to lose a battle. But know that you will never lose the war. True Christians feel the fullness of the Holy Spirit within themselves which makes them delight in the law of God. But they feel another principle within them, striving hard for the mastery and struggling to drag them downwards and backwards. It's a constant battle. When you try to go up, you feel something pulling your foot, pulling your leg, pulling you down. They're trying to pull you down into a pit, into bondage, and you're trying to climb out. It's a constant battle all the time. Every waking hour of your life. But know that you have the victory through our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. Some feel this conflict more than others. But all who have the Spirit of God are acquainted with it. And it is a token for good. We know that we're going to fight a battle. We know it. 
because the Holy Spirit is in us telling us what is right. But the flesh that you live in, that you walk in, that you sleep in is telling you otherwise to sin. Enjoy the, the sinfulness of the flesh. But the Spirit is telling you, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. And the world, which is ruled by Satan, is telling you, do it, do it, do it. See, Satan cannot tell you to do good. He can only tell you to do bad. It is a proof that the power of darkness, which is ruled by Satan, no longer reigns within us as it once did. Sure, because the Holy Spirit dwells within us as Christians. The presence of the Holy Spirit may be known by inward warfare as well as by inward peace. We might be fighting the battle, but we have peace about the victory. He that has been taught to rest and hope in Jesus Christ will always be one who fights and battles with sin. When temptation comes, you strive to repel it. It's going to come, but it doesn't have to overtake you. Nine, all who have the Holy Spirit dwelling within them also love others who have the Spirit. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 14 says, We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren, because we love one another. There should never be quarreling or distancing between other Christians. If we have a problem, we need to talk it out, love one another, forgive one another for Jesus Christ's sake. Because God forgave us because of his son, Jesus Christ. It is the glory of the Holy Spirit to bring back something of that brotherly love that sin has so miserably chased out in our lives. You see, all through your life, before you, I mean, when you come to the age of accountability and you realize sin, Satan badgers you all the time. He wants to keep you from serving God. He wants to keep you from hearing about God. My beloved, God is greater than Satan. And Satan is a defeated foe. He was defeated when Christ died on the cross, but yet rose from the dead. Know that the Holy Spirit unites men by making them feel they are united to one great center, and that is Jesus Christ, our Savior. He is the center of our faith. He is the foundation. He is the rock that we stand on. And if you try to build on anything else, it is like sifting sand. When the winds come, when the rains come, which means the temptations and the chaos comes. If you're not on that rock, you will fall subject to evil. Ten. This is the last point. All who have the Holy Spirit are taught by him to pray. In the Holy Scripture, he is called the Spirit of grace and of supplications. In Zechariah chapter 12 and verse 10. The chosen of God, the elect of God, I said to cry day and night unto him. That's in Luke chapter 18 and verse 7. The elect cannot help but cry out day and night, and at times their prayers may be poor and weak and wandering, but they know that they must pray and that God heals them from these feelings as they feel peace. But know that even though we pray and we pray with all our mind and we cry out to God, he has a specific time and a specific purpose in answering our prayers. Sometimes it takes hours. Sometimes it's instantly. Sometimes it takes days, months, or years. But the prayers of the faithful will be 
answer. Something within the elect tells them they must speak with God and lay their wants before him, lay their burdens before him. That is what we call laying everything out in the open. Now, God knows already, but he wants you to present them to him. You know, it's like at Christmas time, you tell somebody what you want. Now, you know it's going to come, but you're still anxiously waiting for it. And if it doesn't come on Christmas Day, it might come the day after Christmas. But if it was promised to you, it will come. When God makes a promise that your prayers will be answered, in the name of Jesus Christ, they will be answered. It will come to pass. But it is in God's time. Just as an infant will cry when it feels pain or hunger because of its nature, so will the elect of God implanted by the Holy Spirit help a man to pray. A lot of times we don't know how to pray, what to pray for. And you know what I'm talking about. It's hard. But the Holy Spirit of God makes intercession for us to the Father with groanings that cannot be uttered by man. That no one knows what is being said, but the Holy Spirit knows. And he makes intercession for the saints. So, pray the best you can. Pray in the Spirit. And God will answer your prayers. Amen. See, because the Holy Spirit has a, is the Spirit that will honor the Father. He is the Spirit of adoption because you have been adopted into the body of Christ. You have been adopted into the Holy Family through Jesus Christ. So you belong because of what Christ did on Calvary. So a Christian with those that are elect have the spirit of adoption and they cry out as it says in Galatians chapter 4 verse 6. Abba, Father. Daddy, dearest, my Father. So in closing, my beloved, if a person has not the desire to seek God, to pray, to help others, or to <clears throat> have a love of things of God and Christ, then it can be said that he or she has not the Holy Spirit of God and is not elect, is not a Christian. Therefore, the said person is on his or her way to hell. That's the way it is. Or destruction. Or damnation. And this is the direction they are going in to. Unless he or she repents and turns to Christ for salvation. For the saving of their eternal soul. You see, the soul of man is eternal. My beloved, don't perish because you turned from God. Receive Jesus Christ today as your Savior and Lord. And he will receive you unto himself. Now, I want to give you the opportunity to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. You must repent of your sins. Be sorry for your sins. Believe that Jesus Christ is the only begotten Son of God. That he came to this earth to die for the sins of the world. That he was crucified, he died, he was buried, he rose from the dead on the third day, and he ascended into heaven. My beloved, and from that heavenly throne, he makes intercession for the saints. 
So when you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, he continues to make intercession to the Father for you. What a marvelous Savior Jesus Christ is. And if you would like to receive him today, I want to lead you in prayer. Won't you pray this with me, my beloved? And have eternal life in heaven and not eternal damnation in hell? Let us pray. Father God, I heard the message today. And it touched my heart. I want to have the Holy Spirit living within me. I want the Holy Spirit to give me life through Jesus Christ. Therefore, I repent of my sins. I'm sorry for my sins. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Savior of all mankind. That he was crucified, died, buried, rose from the dead on the third day, and ascended into heaven. As God sitting at the right hand of God the Father. From where he shall come to judge the dead and the living. My beloved, if you believe that today and you believe it in your heart and you confess it with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, then you have eternal life. It's just not saying a prayer. It is believing what you are praying. And if you have done so in true repentance and belief, you have received eternal life. And when you leave this life, you will go to heaven. Which means you have become a true Christian. See, my beloved, there are many that say they're a Christian because they belong to a church. They belong to an organization. But they have never repented. My beloved, a true Christian had remorse for their sinfulness, repented of the sinfulness and sorrow and received Jesus Christ as their Savior and Lord. And if that's what has happened to you today, let me be the first to welcome you into the kingdom of God. Now, what I would like you to do, and I say this every service, go to a Bible preaching, teaching church. One that preaches the word of God from the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation. Without modification. In all truth. Tell the pastor or one of his elders what happened. Ask the pastor to anoint you with oil. To pray for you and to pray with you. And to baptize you in water by full immersion. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Then ask him to mentor you. To put you in a new converts class. And you may learn the things of God. And you may become a vessel for God to use. To tell others about Jesus Christ. Then what I would like you to do is contact me by email at Abundant dot grace at att dot net or through our website at www.abundantgracechurch.net or www.abundantgraceofmelothian.com you can watch us on social media on youtube facebook twitter pinterest or listen to us over our local radio station but please, let me hear from you. Thank you for listening today or for viewing this video. And I pray that God blesses you abundantly. And remember, if you have not rep repented, if you have not truly repented and received Christ as your Savior and Lord, please receive him before it's too late. God bless you, my beloved, and go with God.